Previously on the Dice Girls. Talon here has been going over to Timber Tide for the past several months. He's going to be coming with you on this adventure. He also has a contact over there. There is a tiefling that he's been able to kind of make friends with named Guile. And uh, he's going to introduce you guys today. And, and hopefully hopefully you'll be able to kind of work your way into this, this tiefling uh, well, we don't want to call it a cult before we know what it is, but, but all indications point to some sort of religious activity going on over there. Is my father alive? One can be alive in, in many ways. What is that supposed to mean? Is he dead? I don't know how to deal with this information. I'm sorry. Will our adventurers be able to talk their way into the tiefling cult? What will they think of Talon's friend Guile? And most importantly, what is Trigus's favorite breakfast food? You're about to find out. With sugar and spice and a roll of the dice, you're listening to The Dice Girls. Hello, Demon Face. <laughs> oh, no. So you guys were... Uh... The last thing you remember is you you fell asleep at the tavern in the waterside district of Timbertide. Rachna, I want you to roll me a perception check, please. Eight. <laughs> Eighteen. Okay. No, eight. eight. Oh, eight. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, so, Rachna, in what feels like to you the middle of the night, you are awakened by a hand over your mouth. <sighs> And you uh, hear a voice whispering for you to wake up. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't think I don't move. Do you open your I'm, eyes or anything? Uh, holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'll, I open my eyes, and that's it. Okay, and as your eyes adjust to the darkness, you see Talon leaning over you. Um, <laughs> and he's kind of like gently shaking you, and his hand is over your mouth. Wake up, sleeping beauty, but be quiet about it. Okay, um, <laughs> I look at him bewildered. <laughs> I don't make any sound or anything. Uh, it takes me a second to like calm down after freaking out about that. And, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll move, I'll, I'll like, Touch his hand to, like, move his hand off my mouth and, and whisper to him, what's going on? Sorry, dude, I didn't know how to else to wake you. But, uh, by the way, did you know Mara sings in her sleep? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a little creepy. <laughs> but beautiful. She's got a great voice. <laughs> dude, get dressed. I'm going to be waiting downstairs in the tavern. We're having breakfast. What are we doing? You and me. Breakfast. Okay. And he exits the room. Okay. Um, I get dressed. I still I still take all my equipment with me. Um, I don't put on the patchwork cloak, but I keep it in my bag. Okay. And I go downstairs to meet him. Okay. Uh, when you go downstairs, uh, you see that he's holding two plates full of, like, mouth-watering bacon and sausage and egg and toast and... The bar is mostly empty. It's like really early. Uh, the sun isn't even really fully up yet. And he leads you to a small table uh, in like a secluded corner of the of the tavern, even though it's empty. Um, and then he sets down your plate and he sits down and he like gestures for you to, to join him. Are you going to tell me what's going on? Dude, I just wanted to know if you wanted to talk about what happened yesterday at Claire's. Oh, jeez, you scared me. I thought we were going to do some like covert mission on our own or something without those other guys no way dude <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> but are you okay uh i'll be i'll be all right i, I don't want to pry but i know it's not good to hold that stuff in man uh yeah i'm still i'm still kind of reeling from all that i guess um <laughs> mostly at this point i i i feel bad for the way I reacted, and I'm grateful that I that it didn't get any worse than it did. I I wish I could apologize to Claire. Um, that was a that was a tough question for me, and I I probably should have been a little more emotionally prepared for what was going to happen. I I already know that she doesn't answer. She doesn't give straight answers. 
That's fair, but I mean, you know, it's I get it. I get it, dude. I uh I uh lost my little sister a few years back. So I get where you're coming from. I'm sorry. I I still I mean, I can't know for sure what she meant, but all I can think is that all that she said was just that he's dead. And I just wasn't I wasn't ready for that. You know, I didn't I didn't know my dad very long, but what I did know of him, I guess I just always assumed that he was such a survivor that he could make it through anything. And so I I had to know, but I I just wasn't ready. <laughs> I don't I don't wanna like, you know, give you a false hope about anything, but Claire's answers are pretty vague and I mean to me it didn't really sound like it sounded like she didn't really know, actually. I thought she would. I thought she was someone who could know and who would know. And I don't, I mean, I don't know if she doesn't know. All, all I know is that f- from what I heard, it, it just doesn't sound good. And I don't want to get my hopes up about something that... I get it. I don't know what's... I don't want to get my hopes up just to be dragged back down again. I understand that. Completely. Well, I'm sorry, dude. That's That was really rough yesterday, and I just wanted to make sure that you're doing okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. we got to watch out for each other. I mean, we're in this together. It's not going to be easy, and we got to take care of each other. You're a good friend, Talon. Thanks, Rock. Now you're a good friend, too. I say this in between, like, really, like, gross bites of, like, eating all the meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him too. <laughs> Um, and the two of you continue to have breakfast together. We're going to fade that scene for a moment. Um, Mara and Trigus, you guys kind of both wake up at the same time, and Rachna is nowhere to be found. What ho? Where's Rachna? <laughs> Has she left us? Was it your singing? <laughs> I feel like Mara isn't aware that she sings in her sleep. So I have no idea what you're talking about, Trigus. But I'm sure everything is fine. Rachna wouldn't leave us. We must find her immediately. <laughs> Why don't we go check downstairs? Let's check the bathroom first. <laughs> okay. If that's She's not thing. in here. <laughs> Maybe shall we try going downstairs, Trigus? Yes, I'll lead the way. I'll protect you. If someone has stolen our Rachna, I will have to fight him. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Okay. You don't, like, go look for Talon in his room first or anything. Like, you just go to ditch him and go look for me. <laughs> uh, right, so the two of you head downstairs, and when you see the tavern, you see Rachna and Talon. Uh, they're they're eating breakfast together at this at this table. And uh, Talon, actually, he kind of looks up when you guys come down the stairs, and he sees you, and he smiles and waves and gestures uh, gestures towards the, the tavern, uh, the bar, um, for you guys to maybe grab some breakfast and come join join the party. Rachna is safe. She's with Talcum. I think we should eat. I, I agree with that assessment, Trigus. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we were worried about you. He was worried about you. <laughs> you were gone. You weren't in the bathroom. <laughs> I assumed you were down here. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, we just had some one-on-one time with Talon. You know, we've gotten pretty close. So, But, hey, uh, you know, come join us. We're... This food is great. <laughs> it is quite delicious. <laughs> I'm curious what Trius wants for breakfast. Whatever they have is fine with me. I'm not a picky eater. I've learned to digest anything that I eat. I can get nutrition out of the strangest thing. <laughs> Shoe leather, if times are tough. <laughs> Did you just find that floating in the ocean? Or... Yeah. You crawled up on shore and you hadn't eaten before. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, here's a boot. Right. Right. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, luckily for you, they're not serving shoe leather today. They're serving bacon and eggs and toast and um, sausage. Mmm. Are you going to get some? Oh, I already, my plate's already full. <laughs> You didn't see me. I was so fast, like, just speeding down the line. <laughs> I assume Mara gets breakfast yeah. as well. Yeah. The four of you have a great breakfast together. Um, and then Talon uh, takes you to a small park. It's at the edge of the Waterside District of Timber Tide. 
Um, and as you kind of like walk along, you see that the Waterside District, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's a scattered layout of buildings and, and homes. They're all around like one side of this small lake. Um, and then at the edge of the district is the small park. Uh, there's a few wooden benches here and there. And Talon takes you to a bench um, in the park and you sit down and he tells you that you are waiting for his friend Guile, uh, who is supposed to meet him here this morning. So you all sit. You don't have to wait very long. Um, Talon grins as he, he sees uh, someone approaching you in the park. And you guys see a tall tiefling uh, walking towards the four of you. He looks kind of hesitant. Um, he's, he's young. Um, he's probably late teenager, early adult. Um, he's got like reddish brown skin. Um, he has a long, thick tail, and he's got two tan horns uh, cu curling from the top of his head. Um, he's got like messy, dark hair, uh, and, and he's dressed in a leather jacket that's been dyed black and has the sleeves ripped off of it. Um, and he's got like billowy black pants that have like silver accents. And as he gets closer, you can see that he's got gold hoops lining both of his pointy ears and his eyes are entirely black. If you've never seen a tiefling before, he looks a little intimidating. Um, minus the fact that his facial expression clearly shows that he's a little hesitant to come see you guys. But you can imagine that he'd be a pretty scary dude if he had to be. Um, he, he, he comes over and he sees Talon and he kind of like glances at the three of you on Shirley and, and looks at Talon a little questioningly. Talon stands up from the bench and they give each other a quick hug. Um, and, uh, Talon, Talon says, Hey guys, uh, we, we've, we've got a lot to talk about today. Guile, uh, don't be alarmed. These are my friends. Uh, this is Rachna, Trigus, and Mara. Guys, this is Guile. And, uh, Guile kind of like, he... He a little sheepishly, like, kind of smiles at you and says, hey. Hello, demon face. <laughs> oh, no. I love the metal on your... Are those ears? Uh, I love the way they sparkle. They remind me of fish hooks. Guile's tail kind of, like, wraps around the back of his legs and it, like, curls up and he, like, he kind of, like, fidgets with the end of it in his hand a little bit and he kind of, like, uh, he kind of, like, makes a face and, uh, I wish Trigus would be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad. He, uh, he, uh, he looks, he looks a little nervous for a second, but then he kind of, like, he kind of, like, puts up this, this tough guy face and is, like, well, you guys have got some weird eyes yourselves. Look who's talking. <laughs> what is going on with that? And he kind of like leans in, Trigus, and is like real close <laughs> in your face. And he's like just looking at your eyes. What? Aren't they lovely? What? What? We have target eyes. I, yeah. Aren't I they wonderful? That. Well, I don't know if wonderful is the word I would use for them, but Talon, what is going on? And Talon, Talon just says, uh, well... These guys are my friends, and they're here to figure out what these religious guys are up to and maybe uh, stop them before they do anything bad. And Guile looks a little a little unsure. Like, are you sure they can be trusted, though? Like, I mean, look at their eyes. And, and Talon says, yeah, yeah, dude, they're good. I promise. They're with me. I know these dudes. They're good dudes. They're on our side. Uh... <laughs> Dude. 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 <laughs> Dude, they're on our side. <laughs> I really asked you to meet me here this morning to see if you'd be willing to kind of help us out. You know, we got a, today's a big day. I think we're going to the, to the tiefling church and, uh, going to try and get these guys in there, but we might need your help. You're, you're a tiefling, so they're going to be more likely to trust you, dude. I just, we, are you, are you in or out? And Guile thinks about it for a moment and he kind of like looks at the three of you and he looks a little unsure <laughs> but he looks at Talon again and Talon kind of just nods encouragingly like please help us out and Guile says yeah yeah all right uh mostly because I don't trust the other tieflings here in this town I don't know what they're up to but they're up to something and it's not good I don't like it so uh, we need to, we need to figure out what's going on. And um, Guile asks the three of you, uh, "Well, well, I guess the first place to start would be to to go to their 
to their church. I mean, are you guys, do you have a plan? Are you, uh, what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? We really don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, kind of. We're, uh... So far, the only plan we have is our eyes. <laughs> n- n- no, we talked about last time that we were going to tell them that we were something, something, something. <laughs> you were going to tell them that you had met the gnomes in the Carmia Caverns and that they gave you a trinket and asked you not to tell anyone about their presence. And right. when you did, the trinket turned out to be a cursed item and it right. gave you all the mark of the betrayer. And so now you're very angry we're at the angry gnomes. gnomes. You're angry at gnomes is your yeah. plan, basically. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't like the gnomes. That's our plan. <laughs> Guile kind of shakes his head, <laughs> and his eyes get a little big. <laughs> well, I mean, if that's what you're working with, that's what you got, right? I don't know what else we could tell them that might help us. Or, well, I guess are we ready? Are we ready to go then? <laughs> are we just going? Are we going is, now? Is there anything that you can tell us that might help us out before we go? Well, I don't know a whole bunch about the activity of the church. I just, my, my uncle Amity has been trying to get me to go, but I don't, I'm not interested in whatever they've got going on. Uh, they meet a couple of times a week. They, they kind of took over this old abandoned church building that, uh, that was over here in the Waterside District. And I, I don't know a whole bunch, but, uh. You know, people always whisper and talk, but, you know, this time I feel like there might be something to it instead of just them being afraid of tieflings. These guys, I don't, something doesn't feel right in my gut, you know. Have you heard any rumors about what they're doing? I I, I really haven't heard a lot. I mean, I've there may have been something. You guys mentioned gnomes, and uh, I heard something about some gnomes, but I don't, it was... I kind of didn't even pay attention to it. I dismissed stuff like that. Tieflings, I, I don't know how familiar you are, you are with, with, you know, my my race, but we, people don't like us very much, and people say all kinds of crazy things about us that, that just isn't true, so I usually don't even pay it much mind. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess we're going. I guess we're going. <laughs> I guess we're going. <laughs> This is kind of cool, you guys. I mean, I'm scared to death. This is a terrible plan, but, like, we're going undercover. (laughs) Don't worry. We're also scared to death. (laughs) That is not comforting at all. (laughs) So, Gallia muskets, Gallia spears, we'll plunder the shores of Calcineer. Come all ye sailors and scallywags, and join the crew of Flintlocks and Fireballs, a D&D podcast following a band of privateers sailing the seas of Napoleonic Calcinia. Catch us at flintlocksandfireballs.com every Tuesday at 7pm GMT, or on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, and more. You can also follow us on Facebook at Flintlocks and Fireballs, or Twitter on at FlintlocksDND. Fair seas! Natural twenties. No cracking storm or spell we fear, so come and sail with us, my dear. Hey, Dicelings, it's Becca, your Dice Girls DM here for another solo. Today is going to be short and sweet because I am getting ready to go out of town for PodCon in Seattle this weekend. Uh, by the time you hear this, PodCon will be over, but I'm recording it before I leave. Holy bananas. I am so excited. So I'm sure I'll be posting all over Twitter about it. Uh, we are on the Dice Girls at Twitter. You can you can find all that there. Um, the other announcement I want to make today is that I want to say a huge thank you to Dem Fancy Dinosaurs and Telemachus, who I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. Those are our latest patrons on Patreon. Thank you both so much for directly supporting our podcast. If you want to do the same and have access to all sorts of behind the scenes uh, and bonus content, you can find us on patreon.com slash the dice girls. The other way that you can support us that is super huge is to tweet about our show using the hashtag the dice girls. Uh, it basically word of mouth is the best way for us to grow big and strong like Word of mouth 
is like eating vegetables for a podcast. So help us eat our vegetables. I don't know where this metaphor is going. I don't. But in any case, we are so grateful when you guys tweet about our show, especially when you use that hashtag, the Dice Girls. It really just helps get the word out there. And like I said, it helps us grow big and strong. Thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys again next week. So uh, with that, uh, Guile kind of leads the way uh, to the church. It's not very far from the park. It's a short walk. Um, And you approach the church and you can see that it is a small, white, um, house-shaped building with beautiful stained glass windows and stairs leading up to a double door entrance. Um, You see a triangular symbol on the door that none of you really recognize, and it looks a little bit newer uh, than the rest of the paint. And as you're kind of looking at it, Guile leans over and whispers to you guys, that's the tiefling symbol for Asmodeus. Uh, he's, he's the king of demons, guys. Uh, there was a pact that was made centuries ago that infused our bloodline with his essence, and it's the reason we look the way we do now. And you can see again that his tail is kind of coiled around the back of his legs tightly as he tells you this information, and, and he... He's clearly a little nervous about this. Should we? Are we? Are we doing this? <laughs> uh, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, before we go in, I think we should make Trigus really clear <laughs> that we're Ooh. going undercover. Oh yeah. Are we sleeping? <laughs> I just woke up. I am not tired. I would like to do an adventure. (laughs) Okay, Trigus. What we're about to do, we're going to have to lie to these people. Oh. Yes, so they don't know who we are. Because if they find out that we're involved in the stuff that we're involved in. The performance? (laughs) The stuff before that. (laughs) The date? (laughs) (gasps) Guile is, like, watching this conversation (laughs) so intently. (laughs) He looks equal parts shocked and horrified. What we've been doing for the past couple weeks. Oh, having a great time. (laughs) The people we've been having a great time with. Oh, those people we not No. No. Remember, we don't talk about that. Oh, we don't talk about the little people. We don't talk about that. Okay. Okay. If they find out that we're with the little people. Okay. Things are not going to go well. Okay. For anybody. Okay. Nope. Um, Still a secret. Still a secret. Still but super now, secret. Now it's super more secret. extra secret. Okay. Like ultimate okay. secret. Ultimate secret. Okay. Yeah. We're going to try and... So we're going to have to say that we don't like the little people. Yeah. Okay. We, just, we have to get the story straight, I guess. Okay. okay. What's the story? <laughs> Our story is that we met the gnomes in the caverns. And we betrayed them, so now we have the cool eyes. Okay. But we don't like the cool eyes. Okay. <laughs> and we're angry at the gnomes. Angry. Yes. 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 We want these guys to think that we're on their side. Okay, yes. so we're making friends. Yes. Yes. Okay. I am ready to make but friends. don't make actual friends, Trigus. Because <laughs> these guys are <laughs> probably not going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <'Cause> I accidentally <laughs> joined the people in cold. <laughs> so don't get attached to any of these people, okay. please. Okay. Yeah. We just need to find out what they know and if they're involved in the bad stuff. Okay. But Should I go it. first? No. no. Don't try to act as natural as possible. Don't seem suspicious. We're acting. Okay. Got it. Understood. Yeah. Okay. I am yeah, a exactly. great actor. This is a this is an opportunity for me to no. To <laughs> practice my craft. I think we're good, right? We're good. That's probably like, good. That's about as good as it gets, yeah. <laughs> I think we got through to a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whew, are you ready for this? <laughs> nope. Me neither. <laughs> you heard Talon mutter, Bahamut help us. <laughs> <laughs> as you guys begin to walk up the stairs to the church uh, towards the, the doors. And... 
Um, it's locked. Well, I guess we're going. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> you guys know our policy with locked doors. We just walk away. <laughs> Kyle says, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. We're Yeah, let's go figure out something else, guys. Or maybe we should knock. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> All right, go ahead and knock, Mara. Oh, goodness. Okay. I knock on the door. <laughs> you knock on the door, and... Nothing happens. And Trigus puts his hands around his mouth and gets up close to the crack of the door and says, What ho? Are you closed? Um, after a moment, (laughs) after a moment, you hear footsteps coming from inside the building to the door. And you hear a lock, a lock, and... The door um, is opened, and someone pokes his head out, and it's a tiefling. Um, He's a bit older. Um, He's, like, lavender-colored, and he's got ivory horns, black, slicked-back hair. Um, His eyes are black. He has very pointy teeth, Um, and he's wearing, like, a simple black tunic, Um, and he's got, like, a short black goatee. And he, like, pokes his head out the door. He sees the five of you, and he raises his eyebrows and looks at you guys and says, What do you want? We'd like to come in. (laughs) Uh, we're not having any services right now, and we're not... Why did you bring these people here? And he's looking at Guile. And and Guile kind of of steps forward, and he he says, Uh, well... They're really interested in 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 what you guys have, have got going on, and and uh, 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 I thought I would spread the good word, and 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 you know have more members of the congregation here. They're they're interested in 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 joining the church, and this. Older tiefling kind of cocks an eyebrow and he looks again at the three of you and he kind of like rubs his goatee. I don't know about joining the church, but I am interested to hear a little more of your story. And he's specifically looking at your eyes. You know, I've got a little bit of time right now. Why don't you, why don't you follow me to my office and we can have a little chat. And he opens the church door. We go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like Mara's just like super stone faced, just like serious and like Ugh. Yeah, Ragna's definitely been like tense the whole time, but she's trying really hard to just look natural and uh and calm and not super terrified. <laughs> And Trigus is just striking various poses, you know, actor poses. <laughs> like I'm like I'm getting my headshot done. Okay, <laughs> fair. You um you follow this tiefling uh into the church and you step into um a small unlit vestibule area. You see a couple of benches. Um, to your left is a closed wooden door. You can see it like a small indentation of the same symbol that you saw painted on the outside of the church um, that Guile said was the symbol of Asmodeus, but it seems like a little lopsided. Um, one of the sides is like a lot longer than the others. Um, and then in front of you, you see another set of double doors, and that is where um, the tiefling goes. He walks through the double doors uh, and steps into a sanctuary. Um, that you follow him into, and there's rows of benches with an aisle up the middle that leads to kind of like a raised stage area. Um, There's a wooden stand in the center of that stage, Um, and then off to the left side of the stage is a a door that's slightly cracked open, and you can see like a light coming from it, and uh, the tiefling leads you through that door uh, into uh, an office where there is a desk, and he goes and sits behind it, and he has a couple, he has three chairs uh, in front of the desk, and he motions specifically for the three of you to sit down, and uh, Talon and Guile kind of stand behind you. I enjoy your stage. 
It's a pulpit, but thank you very much. Shall I perform now? No. Or no, do we uh, do we wait? Let's sit. And and Rachna leads Trigus to sit as she goes to sit down as well. He looks a little suspicious of what's going on. How did you even Well, I guess I'm sorry. My name is Carmos. Who are you? Uh, I'm I'm Rachna. And this here is uh, Trigus and Mara. Pleased to meet you, Carmex. <laughs> he's uh, <laughs> don't mind him. He's uh, he's a little odd. That's putting it mildly. Interesting. What? How did you hear about us? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Should we tell him that we hate the little people now? <laughs> I can, I can hear you. No, I, I that was just Ashley going. Guys, what are we gonna do? <laughs> okay, <sighs> all right. Um, we heard some rumors from some people we met in a tavern that said something is going on between you and the gnomes. And we were curious on what exactly was going on between you and the gnomes. When you mention the gnomes, he kind of raises an eyebrow a little bit. And he kind of, like, he waves his hand a little at you. Pish posh. Rumors. (sighs) Silly humans are always spreading rumors. He looks at Guile. Why did you bring these three creatures to me? And he, like, when he says creatures, he kind of sneers a little bit, like, he clearly thinks you're inferior to him. And Guile kind of steps forward and just says, I mean, look at their eyes. And Carmos rubs his chin and thinks for a moment and says, yes, I do recognize that mark. What happened? Well. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too bad that you say that those are just rumors. That's what we're here for. About a month ago, in the Carmea Cavern, we ran into a few gnomes. They seemed awfully scared of something. In exchange for our silence, they gifted us a trinket. Uh, It looked pretty valuable. And so, when we had taken it to uh, the closest jeweler uh, to appraise it, I mean, we didn't have any reason to keep it. Uh, I'd much rather have the gold, but he, he seemed a little suspicious of it and asked where we got it. Without a second thought, I told him where we got it. And the moment that I did, he dropped it on the counter. It was white hot and it burst and a scream came forth from it. There was a blinding light and when the light dissipated, we had these eyes. The mark of the betrayer, the jeweler told me. And the trinket was gone. No money for us. And that was more than enough for me. Rachna, roll me a deception check. Oh God. Because oh. it's uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nine. <laughs> what is deception? Charisma plus one. That's oh a ten. God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listens to your story really intently, but his eyes keep going. Do you wear a symbol of Bahamut? I think, did we say at one point that you did? Uh, or I think you... we said that my armor, I actually, think... I think like my chest piece or I something like that. that. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that, yep, that was. Yep, okay. yep, yep. His eyes keep kind of, during your story, glancing down uh, at the chest plate of your armor. And. He cocks his head when you're finished speaking. It's a very unusual reaction from a supposed follower of Bahamut. I don't know how much you know about orcs, uh, but we're not known for our mild tempers. And I admit that to to many of the more mild-mannered races, it may seem a little overboard. Since that day, I have spent some time speaking to Bahamut, and I do believe that he has answered me. My oath is one of vengeance, and Bahamut, Bahamut doesn't take kindly to betrayal. I am, I am, and always have been, a devout follower of Bahamut, and 
I listen to what he tells me. And he and I both don't take kindly to such scorn from another. Such an overblown reaction to the simple sale of a trinket. As travelers, we need the gold wherever we could get it. So what if I have need to get rid of this shiny trash just so that we could survive a little while longer? I speak to Bahamut and and I always listen to what he tells me. And he does not take kindly to someone hurting, marking one of his most devout followers. And one of the other two of you, how clearly you've also been marked, how do you feel about the gnomes? I have no love for anyone but me, so once they cross me like that, they deserve to pay. Pay how? Anyway. And what of you, sir? I hate the little people. They are annoying. They smell. (laughs) And they do not shave properly. I cannot abide by it. Karma smirks, and he looks at Talon and Guile, and they both are nodding in agreement. And Talon speaks up and says, Yeah, dude, those gnomes are a nuisance as far as we're concerned. And Guile nods. And Karmos asks, do you even know anything of Asmodeus? Magma, is this someone that we've met before? No, Trigus. Sounds familiar. I believe you would know if you had met the king of demons. I don't believe we've met a king on our travels. (laughs) (laughs) I admit that we don't know much. Uh... In our in our travels, we were we were led here, as my companion Mara here said. We had met a few people in uh, Edoran in the tavern who had pointed us in your direction. He sighs. We could always use more people to do our work. However, I'm not fully convinced, and I'm not sure I could present the three of you to our high priestess right now. I don't know that she would be impressed at all. She has not seen my bagpipes. Carmos <laughs> like rubs his temples and closes his eyes for a moment. I want the three of you to prove your worthiness. Bring me a gnome. You have seven days. Oh no. That was me. That wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> if you can bring me a gnome within the next week, I will believe that you are ready to serve our purpose. And if not, as Modius help you. Quick question, how long did it take for us to get here from... A day. We'll do it in five. 